There's this saying that war never changes. In the previous era, humanity finds itself needing to fight off bloodthirsty monsters called Honkai. They weren't that much of a problem for the previous era early on, that is, until they show up. When the first few Hershers appeared, they seemed to have been defeated without much problem, but then it started to go less well, and then it went badly. And with the human's combat power waning from subsequent battles, the stage was set for a radical change, one spearheaded by a few. A change that would completely alter the course of the entire war. As you may have seen from the title, this video is about Mobius, but that isn't entirely accurate as it was a team effort. People like Dr. May comes to mind, though for brevity, I'm going to focus on Mobius because unlike most people showing some doubts with some of the more radical proposal, Mobius instead goes, Hell yeah, brother, and would proceed to not shut up about how it would change everything and whatnot. She kinda just goes all in, or as I would imagine in the words of those around her, bad shit insane. As with most Honkai characters' backstories, hers are filled with family strife. Losing her mother right after her birth, which by the way, according to the source, she was somehow able to speak right out of the womb, like what is she, Jesus? She then spent a few years afterward living with her father, which proved to be a lot more difficult than you'd imagine, as her father routinely commits domestic violence in the household ever since he started taking some meds with funny side effects after he caught an illness. At some point, Mobius had enough of this shit and set a goal for herself to evolve people into what she considers the perfect human quite ambitious coming from a 9 year In her own words, evolving humans would probably involve fundamentally adjusting things in people. And there's no better place to do this than at a random shady organization called Moth, where she eventually became one of the lead scientists. Her time there was characterized by countless crazy experiments, with morals being the first thing out the window. The most notable one being the Mantis Surgery, pumping people with Honkai through Honkai Beast genes and hoping they don't turn into some kind of monster. Even though Dr. May may have been the one who put forth the idea, it was often Mobius who enthusiastically performed it on subjects who was there voluntarily or not. It cannot be understated how clutch the Mantis surgery came when the Hersher at the time, the Hersher of Fire, made every Hersher that came before it look like a fucking joke. The Hersher would eventually be defeated by the first person who went through the surgery, Kevin, who till this day holds the highest kill streak on Hershers, and with that, the previous era had an ace up their sleeves. This wasn't enough for Mobius. You see, the current mantises are just using parts of the Honkai beast powers they have been given, as they are still mostly human. But what if we turn them into beasts with human consciousness so they can harness all their power? This was what Mobius first tried on herself in what would be called the Metamorph Incore Transformation or Active Honkai Reaction or whatever else you want to call it. She would quickly find out that getting full control of a volatile force of nature wasn't as easy as it sounds. She successfully brought her inner beast out but quickly lost control of herself and went on a rampage. Luckily, further tragedy was prevented from happening thanks to the quick thinking from her colleagues who came to her rescue. After this spectacular blunder, most mantises were able to somewhat control their beast form, with Cosma being the one who got the short end of the stick. In Mobius's case, her surgery basically made her into Slither.io. This would lead to a tragedy that probably made her fall deeper into the making humanity great again rabbit hole. You see, her beast technically made her immortal in the sense that she preserves herself by shedding her physiques, you know, like a snake except she becomes smaller, which raises the question of what would happen if she were to keep doing it until she's a single cell organism, something that will unfortunately not be answered as you know. Anyways, for her to go through this process, she needs to absorb materials, usually living things, which brings us to an incident where her assistant stabbed her after being possessed by the Legion Hersher. Picture a situation where Mobius is lying dead on the floor, and then her body started to leak out black goo that ate her assistant. Whole, by the way. Normally no one would care about an extra being eaten alive, but this wasn't just some random characters that appear one time to serve as a plot device and will never be relevant again. <coughs> it was her dear friend, Klein, 
who was one of the few who understood and supported her for who she was. This devastated Mobius, who then, outside of her evolving human thing, took on another obsession to manufacture artificial lives. The two most important being Klein and the Grey Serpents, whose deeds doesn't need to be reminded. Then time passed, and we had the 12 Hersher getting baited into a black box and trapped there. Mobius was more interested in how the Hersher seemed to be formless, and was able to make stuff become an extension of itself like some kind of hive mind. She thought it would be cool to turn humanity into something similar, and by this point, you would have realized this was the literal basis for Project Stigma, the infinite survival of the human race. It was quite an insane project, but one that Mobius deemed to be necessary. So with this knowledge, you would expect her to personally see this to the very end considering how obsessed she was. But that wouldn't be the case because something happened. Something made her do a 180 and abandon this aspiration. This was during the time where most people weren't expecting to hold back the Honkai for any longer. Her group known as the Flame Chasers decided to preserve their experience by recreating themselves in VR, which was done by periodically syncing their memories with their simulations. It was the Elysian Realm. Every Flame Chasers including Mobius needed to go through this process, but her case was a bit unique. Her simulation seemed to have taken her ambitious attitude quite too far by hatching a plan to continue her research, which she would do by escaping the Elysian Realm at a later date, by hijacking unlucky visitors who came to the realm. The sim also decided there should be only one Mobius, which then led to her mind manipulating the previous era Mobius while she was sinking herself with her sim into unaliving herself. That pretty much covered the second part of the Elysian Realm, which if you are interested in the story of the whole thing, here's a summary I made. Anyways, the conclusion some might draw from this was that the previous era Mobius was unethically revolutionary. But when it's her sim, to put it simply, she was a massive c And that was how Mobius was responsible for pretty much most major developments in the previous era, for better or for worse. And to end this on a final note, Literally every single design choices on her seem to point towards the notion of infinity. Her name and also Klein's were named after objects that was the inspiration for the symbol for infinity, which is also the symbol that made up her signet. Story-wise, it's reflected in how she wants to preserve things in order to infinitely continue its existence. Or maybe it's her bottomless obsession with achieving her goals. The list goes on. She may be a bit self-righteous and oftentimes better off working alone, but she was a person in the right place at the right time. The last thing I want to say is that, why please give us pink dress mobile?